Hi guys, this is Mike. In this video, I'm going to talk about workflows for creating characters or creatures in Cinema 4D. When creating a human character or an animal for animation, it requires to start by making a low polygon mesh. You will start then either use subdivision surface or bring that into a sculpting layout, which you can add in a little bit more resolution and detail. So we're going to have really three ways where we could start building a base mesh and then start creating a character for then something that could be either rigged or animated or just simply posed and rendered within Cinema 4D. So the first we have is subdivision surface and its workflow. And I'll talk about the pros and the cons. So by using subdivision surface workflow, you'll be able to skip sculpting and make your model a low poly and then smooth the model using subdivision surface object. The positive of, the, of this aspect of this workflow is that you can skip the time consuming part, uh, the task of sculpting and then baking out the maps and then bringing that into your channel for your materials and then applying that to your your, your sculpt to your character. The negative is that at the end result is not very realistic. The sub D will mainly be used for cartoon style animation. And you can always add in some, some textures and colors using say a procedural channel or procedural materials. And you can also use the, uh, you can select a uh, set selection for certain polygons and then add in a little bit more detail in terms of color. Uh, but it's, it's mainly going to be um, very cartoonish style uh, of, a, of a, a base mesh. So the next what we're going to talk about is the sculpting and baking maps workflow and its pros and cons. So after you create your base mesh in Cinema 4D, and then you subdivide in the sculpting layout. You'll bring that in there and then you'll apply the sculpting. And then what you'll start doing is you'll start adding in some detail. For an example, you'll be adding in wrinkles, skin pores, blemishes, warts, scars, and that kind of gives it a little bit more realistic. You'll be able to add in some high resolution detail, high frequency details, um, which you can then use stamps and then give that give your character a really sculpted, polished, uh, really realistic look. Now, the negative with that is, is that, uh, well, the positive, it's going to be very realistic. You're going to have a realistic looking character or creature or animal. But the negative is, is that you do have to put in a lot of time. You have to bake out those displacement maps. And, and at which point then you'll bring those displacement maps into your displacement channel and your colors and you'll apply that material and then you'll apply that to your base mesh, your low polygon mesh, uh, which could be the very low level of your base mesh or maybe just a, a slightly ab above that. Um, and you can add in a little bit more subdivision to that but you'll be basically applying that to a pretty low resolution model, in which case then you can work with it. Um, you, you won't be able to uh, put bring in a high resolution model for animation. It's just, just too many polygons in order to work with. So then you would apply that map to a low resolution base mesh. So, the positive, it looks great. The negative, it is it is time consuming. You do have to put in a lot of work and it can get a little tricky to get those maps looking correct. So now at this point, what you can then do is UV map using UV edit, or you can use another program such as UV layout by Hedis. I've used that and it's it makes making UVs less of a laborious process because UV mapping is kind of a, a kind of a tedious and not something that most people want to do. It kind of has its own art uh, in order to make that correct. And then with case in that case, 
After that point that you make your UV maps, then you can bring that into a texture program. Uh, Cinema 4D has body paint already built in if you purchase the studio. Or you can bring that into another program, such as Substance Painter by Algorithmic, or which is algor uh, the Substance Painter is more for uh, games, although they're getting better for uh, higher resolution for visual effects. Or you have another program called Mari by Foundry, which is a little bit more towards aimed towards um, visual effects for film and TV. So then you can add in all the, the textures and colors and paint that out and make it look very realistic and look, you know, really awesome. So at that point, now you have your, your base mesh exactly the way you want it, depending on the, the, the process, the workflow that you you went through, now you can rig it, which means you can add in uh, bones and joints into your rig and then weight the mesh so that the parts that you're articulating, say the arms or legs or wings, or depending on what your character or creature is, those parts will move and not the parts of the mesh that you don't want to move. So that requires a little bit of time and it's kind of, again, it's in kind of an art within itself in order to get that correct. Cinema 4D has an excellent rigging process for humans and animals that makes it quite easy to get started, but it still takes some time to get that correct. Okay, so then at that point, then you can either pose it, render it just as a as a uh, art piece, as a uh, to show your character within a portfolio, or to an art director or creative director, or your client, and then you would either keep that as is, or you would animate. You'd bring that in, into Cinema 4D, and then you would animate that. And uh, uh, Cinema 4D has a, a great animation layout. You can do that in a very basic way with the timeline or you can use the animation layout to get more advanced in your animation. At that point, then you would light and render your scene. Uh, you would go through the process of doing that. Now, there is a way to uh, render passes within Cinema 4D, in which case you can bring into Photoshop or After Effects within layers and you would render out, say, the shadows, the highlights, the ambient occlusion, the background on its own layer and its own video file. And then you would put that all together within a compositing program such as After Effects. And then at that point, you could tweak the colors, the saturation, and being able to have a lot more control and get uh, a lot more closer to the, the visual and the aesthetics that you're trying to accomplish and just being able to tweak that. And you can really spend a lot of time in that compositing process in order to make something look even more realistic, more rich, more uh, has lots of textures and um, you can add in lots of different little particles and uh, dust flakes and, and you can really spend some time in that and really make the compositing make your your uh, whatever animation that you're trying to do and make it really come alive so you can either do that uh, you can render those out as a video file or you can render what I recommend is rendering them out frame by frame as a JPEG or TIFF at that point you can then bring those into After Effects reason why I like to render them out frame by frame is that if something goes wrong, say for an example, uh, <laughs> you know, anything could happen, a crash, uh, you could have um, your power go out, and then you would have to start rendering all, all over again. With frame by frame, you can choose which frames uh, uh, position that you wanna do. If you wanna render from one, uh, one frame to uh, another, you can set that so that say you only want to do half of it you want to do part of it you can do that and then a, a put all of those frames together within your compositing program now one last thing i do want to talk about is creating the base mesh it doesn't have to be within cinema 4d a lot of workflows you would probably use 
like you know, I was talking about other programs, you would be using, say, another program to create your base mesh. Now, ZBrush is a really good at creating base mesh and creating geometry for characters. Now, the, the user interface does take a little bit to get used to, and I know I'm talking about uh, creating characters for Cinema 4D, but I think I'd be doing you a disservice if I didn't tell you at least that this program is available, and if uh, you're just starting out, you might want to consider purchasing ZBrush. I think it's pretty economical, although it is another an expense, along with Cinema 4D, which is, you know, it's a, it's a pretty expensive program if you're going with the studio. So what ZBrush will be able to do is use what's called Z-Spheres and being able to create organic characters very quickly in a very natural way, whereas creating uh, base mesh in Cinema 4D is, uh, has, it's a little bit difficult. You can use a box modeling or you can use polygon by polygon and uh, shape your model based on image planes that you would put in the background. So if you had some concept art, if you had um, you know, a front view and a side view, maybe even a top view that you would put into the orthographic views within your Cinema 4D viewport to then use as a reference and being able to model those out. Now with ZBrush, you can do the same thing. You can use a reference, but it's a lot more natural more artistic process in order to create your base mesh. At which point you can then use GoZ, a click of a button, sends it right over to Cinema 4D, in which case you can then tweak a little bit more, you can retopologize if you want, um, and it just makes it a little bit easier of a process. So I just wanted to point that out, and uh, ZBrush is made by Pixelogic, and uh, like I said, the interface, it takes a while. You have to spend some time in it and uh, just get used to the process of making geometry within, within ZBrush. But it is fun to, to start working with. They have a lot of different brushes uh, in order to start making your, your characters or your creatures. Now, this process isn't exactly all linear you can kind of go back and forth, um, and I have. You know, you can create your, um, you can create your base mesh in ZBrush. You can bring that into Cinema 4D. You can retopologize it. Then uh, maybe bring it back into ZBrush, do your little bit more sculpting. Um, at that point, you would then bring that into your uh, UV mapping, map that out before you get into sculpting. And then you would do your sculpting within either Cinema 4D, if you're a little bit more comf uh, comfortable with that and doing sculpting. Um, it has a minimalist tool set, which actually is very, is very useful if you, you just want to learn a bunch of uh, sculpting tools instead of the large array that you have in ZBrush. Um, so you, there, it's not as straightforward. It doesn't have to be as straightforward. Uh, it can be, you can move back and forth between these programs. Um, but if we're sticking with a Cinema 4D only workflow, you would have to create a base mesh uh, from scratch. You would have to actually build it out, either box modeling or uh, polygon by polygon. Now, topology is something I do want to talk about just very briefly. It is very important in order to understand if you're going to model within Cinema 4D or any program, you're going to have to understand the topology of, um, of characters. So you want to use a quad workflow, meaning uh, no triangles or no uh, n-gons. And you want to keep in mind on the poles of your of your mesh so you don't have a uh, five-sided uh, not not too many five-sided poles you want to know where those five-sided poles are going to be if there's going to be some deformations it's going to get uh, kind of lumpy in that part you're going to have like a lump and it's not going to look correct 
So you want to be careful of your five side poles. You want to be careful about uh, any complex poles, uh, six or more uh, poles, uh, six or more edges coming from one vertex. So you want to be careful of that as well. So topology is really almost another video that I can talk about, but I just want you to be aware that if you're going to be animating, if you're going to be making this for a game, you want to be understanding of its um, its topology. Now, games will use a can use triangles, and they will triangulate those base mesh. So, um, I hope this is helpful. It just kind of gives you a broad overview of what you're looking at when you're creating a character within Cinema 4D. I put a link in the description to download project files. You can also go to astronomic3d.com to download project files from this tutorial and all the tutorials that I've made so far. Thanks for watching.